Welcome to another episode of Beautiful, Bad and Bizarre. Today we're back at Putney Vale Cemetery, bringing flowers and paying our respects to two of the most iconic comedy actresses in British film, stage, radio and television history. We are, of course, talking about Hattie Jakes and Joan Sims. In this video, we're going to explore their very close friendship and hopefully uncover the mystery of the location of their final resting place, over which there appears to be some confusion. The oldest of our fabulous duo was Hattie Jakes. Hattie was born on the 7th of February 1922 in Sandgate, Kent. Her real name was Josephine Edwina Jakes. Joan Sims was eight years younger than Hattie Jakes and Joan was born on the 9th of May 1930 in London, Essex. And her real name was Irene Joan Marion Sims. Both accomplished and dedicated actresses, although Hattie of course was more experienced at this point, Hattie Jakes and Joan Sims met for the first time while performing in the review The Bells of St Martins, which ran from the 29th of August to the 29th of November 1952. Unfortunately, it was not a great success and was brought to an early close. Probably a relief for Hattie, who was pregnant with her first son, Robin, who was due in March 1953. She'd married the actor John LeMessurier in November 1949. Working together for the first time, Hattie Jakes and Joan Sims had an instant rapport, which became the start of a deep and loving lifelong friendship. Hattie and Joan were destined to carry on working together, often finding themselves cast in the same productions, both actresses would soon become synonymous with the legendary Carry On films. Although Hattie would appear in the first Carry On, which was Carry On Sergeant in 1958, she would make a total of 14 Carry On films. But Joan, who headed to Pinewood in 1958 to film Carry On Nurse alongside Hattie, would clock up 24 Carry On movies during her career. The cast of the Carry Ons in the main got on well over the years. Joan Sims said, Gathering at the studios for each new picture was like going back to school after the holidays, meeting old chums and sharing all the jokes and gossip. We knew that we had a few weeks of fun ahead of us. Despite Joan's optimism, it wasn't always sweetness and light. Both Hattie and Joan were not always satisfied with the direction their careers were taking, and often even less so with the direction of their personal lives. In 1965, Hattie and John LeMessurier divorced under difficult circumstances, and Joan was finding it really hard to maintain her relationships. The 1960s and 70s were unsettled times that brought the loss of mutual friends such as Tony Hancock, Richard Wattis, Sid James and Peter Butterworth, as well as family members, including the death of Joan's beloved father. The effect of these turbulent times was to strengthen the bond between the two women. Sadly, as the new decade of the 80s dawned, the bond of Joan and Hattie's close friendship would soon be broken forever. Joan would lose her best friend, supporter and cheerleader when, on the 6th of October 1980, Hattie Jakes died at home in her sleep of a heart attack and kidney failure. She was 58 years old. Joan was to say about Hattie's death. Peter Rogers called her the mother superior of the Carrion family, but to me she was more like a sister of mercy. I've lost count of the number of times she scooped me up when I was down in the dumps and her friendship, concern and advice has helped me through innumerable crises. At one point we were seriously hatching a plan to club together and buy a large house where we could live communally. What fun that might have been. Now she had gone and she was irreplaceable. Hattie had been Joan's greatest friend and Hattie's death left Joan distraught. The year before, Joan had also lost her friend and agent, Peter Ede, who'd suffered a heart attack at his desk. Shortly after losing Hattie, Joan's mother died. 
Already traumatised by her losses, Joan Sims then learned of the death of another close friend. She said of this time, To have lost all these props of my life within a couple of years was crushing and I simply could not cope. Joan took refuge in drinking. She said that alcohol became her friend, resulting in many trips to hospital and time in rehab. Despite her struggles with depression and alcoholism, Joan continued to work until shortly before her death on the 27th of June 2001. Aged 71, Joan Sims died primarily of liver failure and diverticulitis, with diabetes and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease as contributing factors. The funerals for both Hattie Jakes and Joan Sims were held here at Putney Vale Cemetery in Crematorium. The cemetery was opened in 1891 and the crematorium in 1938. Hattie Jakes had previously made it known that she had wanted a simple service to include one of her favourite songs, Someone to Watch Over Me, played on the chapel's piano. She also requested a party following the service and that there should be no tears. Obviously, that was an impossible request to fulfil. Two important people were missing from Hattie's funeral. One was Joan Sims. Joan was struggling with her grief, drinking heavily in her flat on the day of the service, but afterwards she was collected and taken to the party. The other person was devastated to find out that he was not welcome and not invited. I will be making a video on this very soon. Now to the mystery of the final resting place of Hattie Jakes and Joan Sims. There appears to be a great deal of confusion over where Hattie Jakes and Joan Sims' ashes were scattered. One of the places that's recently been suggested on YouTube is here in the Rose Garden. It's been said that Joan was scattered on Rosebed 16 and that Hattie is scattered under the oak tree opposite Rosebed 16. However, it seems a bit strange to me that Joan would be here and Hattie over there. Especially considering that that's not an oak tree. Right then, I will hedge my bets to be on the safe side and leave some flowers here anyway. But please come with me and I'll take you to where I believe Hattie and Joan were actually scattered. So, Find a Grave says that Hattie Jakes is here in the Glades of Remembrance, opposite panel 16. Well, we found panel 15, panel 16 is next to it, and there's the tree. It's definitely an oak tree, but I'm not entirely feeling confident that this is the place. So where would Joan be as they were supposed to be next to each other? How about we go to an official source? Here we are now in the Gardens of Remembrance, not too far from panel 16, but slightly on the diagonal. Joan's ashes were scattered under the Hisakara tree. I hope I've pronounced that correctly, otherwise known as the Japanese cherry tree. However, there isn't a cherry tree in sight, or is there? So, it didn't take long to find the cherry tree, or rather, the stump that remains. There's a plaque which reads, This is the original location of the Hisakura cherry, first lawn, upper terrace. And what should be right next to the cherry tree? You guessed it, an English oak. My research, along with the vibes I got from this area, tells me I finally have the right spot for both Joan and Hattie. However, the emotions I felt could have been due to the fact I was in a very emotional place, surrounded by visibly strewn ashes. But I do trust the research. However, if you attended the scattering of Hattie or Joan's ashes and can confirm or deny the area I've identified as their final resting place, please do let me know. Either way, what a carry on. I can imagine Hattie and Joan enjoying a good laugh together in the sky over this one.
I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it and I also hope you'll join me in the next one for another journey back in time and if you have enjoyed this video and haven't done so already please consider subscribing to this channel for more videos if you've already subscribed thank you so much I really appreciate that you are wonderful